Okay, y'all, so I know we all heard about racism, but what if I told you that there is a very much the same or similar type of thing going on within the black community and that there are actually multiple forms of this going on? Well, if you didn't know, stick around and we will get into it. All right, everyone. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bombastic Views, the podcast where people might give the topics that we talk about side eye, but we're so here for it. So you heard me right. In this episode, we are going to talk about um, a division that is very much alive and thriving within the black community. And you're like, Daya, how can black people be um, racist to each other? I'm not saying that at all. It is not called racism. That word is for a different group of people. (laughs) But we will talk about exactly what I mean, because there are different umbrellas of the hate that's going on and the vision, like I said, that's going on within my community. So, guys, before I get into this episode, I do want to do my magazine plug in. Um, I have a magazine called Views, V-I-E-W-Z. Um, And pretty much we have makeup collabs, recipes, health and beauty tips, um, all types of like fun interactive QR codes. And it's available on Amazon um, and or Kindle as well. Amazon and Kindle. We are working on getting the paperbacks done. Um, But yes, we have June um, published already. We will have July's published pretty soon. And this issue is going to be really fun because we are focusing and shedding light on the 4th of July, but also on Plastic Free July. I can't wait for that. But all right, guys, let's get into it. So the division within the black community, I know you've all seen it. I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. Maybe you don't. But a brief example would be um, a light skin versus dark skin situation um meaning like i know you've seen maybe on tiktok or everywhere this whole e cane um lady who is um like a lighter skinned woman and she went on um, social media on her platform where she has millions of followers um and she chose to (laughs) use her platform to um call out someone in a way that is very much e cane but in a way where she could have probably been a little bit more or should have been i'm not probably she should have been a little bit more careful with what she was saying and how she how she came at the woman meaning like if she wanted to talk about her toes she could have but she chose to speak on being a light-skinned woman and how dark-skinned women can never ever be winners and that they're they're never going to eat like um light-skinned women and that pretty much we are trash compared to light-skinned women so um that is just a brief okay that's not even the tip of the iceberg we are going to get more into exactly what type of divisions there are within the community and how maybe we can break them um, because that is literally what my podcast about is about. Yes, I talk about harsh and hard topics to talk about, but I am all about a solution. Okay, so we're going to do this the traditional way like I always do um, and talk about some statistics, but then I will also look up the different types of divisions that there are maybe someone did keep track of it all um i can only speak on the ones that i really experienced myself which i will list later on in the episode um but let's dig in well guys i wasn't as successful in the past with finding some statistics on um this specific topic but i was able to find a few facts that i found on world economic form and it says um colorism is a form of discrimination based on tone skin tone preparate prep 
perpetuated by the global beauty industry, where sales of skin lightening products are projected to reach $8.9 billion by 2024. Studies have shown the existence of a wage gap linked to skin color, which widens as the shade of the worker darkens. Um, and last but not least, companies are urged to be aware of beauty bias and to address it through unconscious bias training, among other methods. Um, and this is all very true. Very, very true. The light skin lightening business is very much booming right now. Because for the longest time, at, at least that I can remember, um, it was in to have light skin. If you had dark skin, you were nasty, dirty, whatever, whatever. Like, that's literally what people said to me. I've been called those things. Nasty, dirty. Okay, so uh, that's why it's coming out of my mouth. <laughs> because I've heard those things. And I've heard people compare me to light-skinned people. Uh, light-skinned women and say how I how much more nasty how nasty I was or how gross I was um compared to this queen or this you know beautiful specimen of a goddess and I'm just like I mean she is like goals like she is you know cute like she's bomb but like why do you have to um, why do you have to put me down uh to uplift another woman I can also relate to the whole wage gap thing due to like how light you were per how dark you were because um, I've worked at like doctor's offices or places where, you know, I didn't really get paid as much as my lighter um, coworkers or even as my white coworkers or even as my Hispanic coworkers and I couldn't understand why. And yes, we did discuss like, hey, I get paid X, Y, and Z. Oh, I get paid X, Y, and Z. But that's funny because like uh, companies don't want you to discuss how much money you make amongst each other. Like they actually have a problem with it and they tell you you're not allowed to or they will try to tell you. But that is your business. You can share whatever you want to share with anyone, but they just don't want to be caught with how they're being. So yeah, but um, I'm so sorry that I wasn't able to find more information on this topic, like statistic wise. Um, apparently, we don't talk about this more than apparently this this topic is very much a hush hush basis for a very um, obvious reason, because the point to keep us was to keep us divided because together we are dangerous um, to a certain group of people who feel that them grouping up and spewing hate is OK but when we group when we grew up group up together to spread love and and make each other aware of our of the culture that we've lost it's dangerous so i just i just i guess we will just talk about the things that i've experienced myself i will play a video real quick um and then we will get into my personal stuff Okay, so before I get into my little spiel of what I've experienced, I did find a video on TikTok where a um, woman is speaking on another form of division that's that's been going on for a while now, a form of division between uh, black men and black women with toxic like conversations on um, how a relationship should be or how people should be. So, um Let's go into that. All right, here we go. Here we go. Social media is amplifying the divide between black men and black women. Pages like Justin L.A. Boy, pages like Spiritual World, who take the most toxic messages from Twitter and all other platforms, put them in one space that are purposely perpetuating narratives that we really aren't interacting with in the real world. You go on a date, you're not having these conversations, but you go on social media and these conversations 
are constantly repeated and none of it is solution focused. It's all what they do, what they do, what, what's not being done and it's not productive. It's not pushing us forward and what's happening is we are internalizing a lot of trauma that does not belong to us. So, oh, I say it again. so we are internalizing a lot of relationship trauma that does not belong to us. So let's say for me personally, right, I've never been cheated on. But let's say I go and I follow a bunch of women who talk about the fact that oh, I've been cheated on. All these niggas cheat. They steady cheating. I'm going to sit there and be like, oh yeah, niggas, they, they all cheat. They, that's all they do. Because, and I'm sitting, I'm not self-aware enough to really understand that that's not even my shit. That's not my baggage. That's somebody else's baggage. So one thing we really have to do is learn how to detach from some of these messages that we are constantly internalizing. Yes, yes. She has such an amazing point. Um, I feel like you know, like everyone's always like kids are sponges, they soak up everything, but we are very much as adults sponges as well. And that is why social media exists. The scroll factor of you're going to sit there um, for hours and scroll and, and you know, most people uh, sit there for hours and scroll and just get fed all this information, whether it's um, good information or true information or misinformation okay whatever whichever type of information it is you're still sucking it in and soaking it in like a sponge and so if you are surrounding yourself and listening to podcasts where they're telling you like black men or they ain't they ain't anything like all they do is this and all they doing is that you're gonna feel that way um when it's not even true you know and I've noticed that a lot where some podcasts are super toxic. Like they are spreading um, not love, not spreading, like she said, a solution, not moving forward. It's very much um, I want to talk my ish and we're going to we're just going to roll with it because it is what it is. And that's why when I made my podcast, I wanted to make it very clear and make even to myself that this is a platform that is very important. And I'm not going to take it and take advantage of it and not do what's right with it. And so, you know, <laughs> that being said, like, I know some people are going to hop on here and be like, today, you're not even dating a black man, you're dating a white man. And I'm going to be like, okay, like, that is very true. That is very true, but that does not mean that I don't get to talk about black issues and black problems that I've noticed, recognized, witnessed, addressed, like, uh, or, uh, you know, see, like, I'm going to address them. And so, also, that being said, like, I've hear, heard podcasts where the boast is, like, you know, black love is is like not a good thing and that's that's a lie like black love is beautiful just because I don't have it does not mean that it's not beautiful yes I have mixed kids but I also have a child that's not mixed like and they're all equally beautiful so I just there's so much to unpack here y'all there's so much to unpack here all right guys so before I get into my take um we're going to do some poetry poetic justice at your service so without further ado let's get into it divided as we stand i don't like how that sounds can we rewrite our story let's support each other now because there's way too much hate that's been taught to us for years we can embrace our different shades of black we can embrace our tears we can appreciate the different cultures. There's no need to add to the separation. As we are all better as one, the division that was set was systemic. And we're the ones carrying it on. So it's definitely time to make a change and ignore the ones who are participating in toxic behaviors to get attention, clout, or stand out. I hope you guys enjoyed that. <laughs> What's on your mind, Daya? Get it out. All right. I sure will. This is the part that you guys have all been waiting for. My personal take on all of this, right? 
And once again, I do want to apologize for this being a kind of vague episode, but it just shows how much um, non-information, not enough information is out there pertaining to the division that is happening um, within the black community. And yes, I know I have a Band-Aid on my finger now. It's because I cut myself during lunch. Mind your business. (laughs) But... Okay, let me tell you the ways that I have experienced a division within my community personally, okay? Um, So we touched on relationship-wise. That I can definitely agree on, like I said earlier. Um, I've had interest in black men where it was like, oh, I, you know, um, I really like you. Or even just any, like, any race of men. I've had quite a few different types of race of men tell me that they do not desire me because I am a black woman or because I'm dark skin and that means that I'm hard. I'm, I'm, I have to be hard, um, ghetto, um, baby mama material, but not wife material. Like, I've heard it all. In, you know, like middle school and high school, I've been compared to girls who were lighter than me. Um, And even by my mother, okay, we'll get into that. But like, romantically, right? Like, everybody be like, oh, what do you think about Sadea to like a boy? And they'd be like, oh, she not even that cute. But like this person, oh, she cute. Like she cute for a black girl. She light skin. She cute. She da 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 da. And I'm just like, that is not a compliment. Like, But for some reason, these girls would take that as a compliment. And all in all, it was just very traumatic growing up looking like me, being told I look like a boy, being told I'm not cute, that I'm one of the boys, that um, just all those type of things that completely hurt my self-esteem. And it didn't help that this was a time in the 90s where... People like Carm, uh, Carmen Diaz and um, Hillary Duff and all these blonde babe bombshell women were like the epitome of beauty. And then but also we had a we had um, Holly Berry breakthrough, right? We had a Holly Berry breakthrough and that wasn't even the best or great experience for us either because it was like. Oh my god, yes. Yes, we have representation. This is this is the this is the, you know, dark skinned girls like me, right? And and light skin even too. Like especially light skinned girls, right? But us dark skinned girls we were like, "Oh my god, we have res- representation." Yes. And then we very much so got slapped in the face, the dark skinned girlies, okay? Not the light skinned girlies. It made the light skinned girls look even more great. But for the dark skinned girlies, it was like you know, we would be hyped up like, yes, representation. And people would be like, ill, sit down, like to us, right? Who look like me, ill, sit down. Holly Berry um, is black, but she's not your black. So you can sit down. And it was just like, oh. So us dark skinned girlies couldn't have that one either. And then it was like, you know, Brandy had became Cinderella and then dated an Asian prince. And that was like, oh my gosh, yes, representation, representation once again. And then everyone was like, ew, no, Brandy shouldn't have never played that part. That's disgusting that they they would even have um, her play a princess because that is she's not princess material. Um, The fact that they even had her dating an Asian man, Asian men don't even look at black women like that. Like there was so many things that I was hearing hearing that was very cringe but this is the truth this is what has this is what's been going on and so let's just say the 90s and the early 2000s was a very traumatic time for me because I did not know who I was but I did know that I was not desirable that I looked like a boy and that I was ugly because I wasn't light-skinned white or a Spanish woman Per the words of the boys that I had crushes on back then. How y'all doing? 
Now, this goes the other way, too, because, like, I've um, dated white men and or out of my race, I should say, and I felt very much fetishized, fetishized, I don't know, Um, because I was, like, they wanted, it's almost like no other black girl gave them a shot, Um, and what they really wanted, like, because they wanted to date a black girl, but they didn't really want to date a dark-skinned black girl, they wanted to date a black girl that could pass for um mixed or you know exotic and so because of that like they would get with me and um ask me like why don't I do my baby hairs more or why don't I wear weaves more or (laughs) why don't I like why do I go in the sun all the time I've heard so many things to where it was like, oh, I see what the problem is. You want to date a black woman, but you don't want to date me, the version of the black black that exists, which is me. The natural hair, the curly curls, the 4C curl, smell like shea better. You don't want that. You want somebody who is fair skinned, fair haired, who could pass for white mixed or whatever and so that's literally what it was because they were fetishizing me they were not accepting the fact that I was me and um that gets rough the dating world is rough y'all but I definitely remember asking these men like or telling these men I should say like wow I think you would really treat me better if I was like lighter and (laughs) <laughs> some men would be like you know what you're right because like I don't even know really how I got with you like they would be honest like that like they would tell me that, that I'm not even their type so but here we are <laughs> okay another divisive um type of thing that goes on is the colorism thing the light skin versus dark skin like I'll just hurry up and get that out the way because we are kind of talking about that right now. Um, The fact that light-skinned women have more of an an advantage than the dark-skinned women. um, This is something that is a thing, y'all. That's why some light-skinned women feel like they can say X, Y, and Z um, because they have, uh, y'all, the people in society have made certain people think and feel that they have a certain type of God complex or untouchable, like, reality. When in reality, we are, like, we're all black. Like, light skin, dark skin, (laughs) okay, melanated. We are all melanated, all right? Um, but there is this weird division of, oh, you light skin. Oh, you dark skin. Oh, you know, you have light skin behavior. Oh, you have dark skin behavior. Um, that I still very much don't understand. Like, I just don't understand it. I know it started from the slavery days where um, literally there would be a lighter fared person per se that would be cho- chosen to be around in the household, not so much in the fields, um, working and slaving, um, but more so in the household um, as like the butler or the maid because they were of lighter skin, fair skin, And so they were more, um, I guess, able to be around without people being sick to their stomach or not really wanting to be dealing with the people, us being with somebody in the same room that looks like us. So they would hire or get, not hire, they would get someone, they would enslave someone to come into the house to be, you know, a fair, a fair of fair skin to be their server. In the household. So they're very much, it very much started then because as you can see, there's like a joke about it too, where it's like, oh, you're the house, you know, and because you light skin and you get to, you got to stay in the house, you know, and then like people would say, oh, you're the slave. You would be in the, you would be in the um, fields or whatever, whatever, getting, you know, your back cracked, like all types of stuff. I've heard, these are all things I've heard. Okay, y'all. So don't come for me. These are not my thoughts. These are things that I've heard. I've heard people have conversations with each other or to me about, okay? 
so don't be mad at me but this is this is coming from a place of this is what i've heard and i don't understand it i will say um it definitely broke my heart that colorism was a thing in my family because um believe it or not my great great my great great grandfather was scottish and um he married he was he was mixed he was scottish and black okay um which means his father was scottish but he was scottish and black and he met um you know my great 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 grandmother who was black and they had um my grandmother's mother okay and so um you know, then, you know, then my grandmother was born and then she's very light skinned. And I never understood this because she was light skinned and we have Scottish in my family. So it was never an issue for me. Race, color, nothing was an issue for me. But then I very much grew up around a mother who would say racial things like she can't stand white people or like she like very much like she would say she hates them. Even she would say that those words and um I never understood why. And then she would also have an issue with light skinned women and I would never understand why. And and then I look back or I stopped and paused and saw that she really had an issue with her mother. Her and her mother had an issue. It wasn't the fact that she had an issue with light skinned women. She had an issue with her mother. So the fact that she had an issue with her mother, she associated every single light skinned person in the freaking universe to be her mother. And so therefore she like acquired like acquired and, and gained a hate for a certain group of people who look a certain way just because of one person and this is what y'all do this is what people do and it was so sad because like my first daughter she is completely black um she has she's bohemian and black native american i mean i'm and native and native american because of my side but also, like, she is black because her dad is bohemian and I'm, you know, African-American. So um, I had her and there was no issues, right? Family was great. Family was kind and, and accepted her. But then once I broke up with her dad and met a white man and had children, um, had a child with him, my mother literally told me I was pregnant with the devil's baby and that I have a demon inside of me and that um, that I need to just not have the child. And then my, you have my sisters talking about some, how do I think my oldest daughter is going to feel um, when she meets her light-skinned, light-eyed sister and how much she's going to have to go through um, having a pretty light-skinned sister. <sighs> and I, I like hearing these two individuals who are dark like me and, and darker, um, have this like thought process in their brains scared the heck out of me because I'm like, bro, we have mixed people in our family. We are mixed. Like, what are you talking about? We're not fully black. What are you talking about? Um, and so, but every time I brought that up, I was disrespectful. I don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> but it's very much true. Like, what <laughs> so guys just know that my response to them about how do i think my dark-skinned daughter is gonna feel about her light-skinned light-haired fair-eyed sister this was this was my response my response was that she's gonna absolutely love her She's going to absolutely adore her and her sister is going to absolutely lo love her and adore her as well. Nobody is going to be a hater to each other because they will have a mother in, um, ensuring that both of them are beautiful in their own ways and to embr embrace the beauty that they have and embrace the beauty that their sister has. Like, it's that simple. <laughs> it's that simple. So sorry for yelling, y'all, but this is I'm very passionate about this. Um. Another form of division that I've noticed in my community is the different cultures. I am African-American or black, 
<laughs> okay? I don't know 100% like what my culture is. I was told I'm Native American, Cherokee to be specific, but I don't know if I'm like anything else or any other tribe or anything like any other race. I have no idea except the whole Scottish and the whole black and Native American thing. That's the only information I know about myself. There are so many divisions within the cultures, right? Um, so like you have my daughter who is Bahamian. Her family is from the Bahamas on her dad's side. Don't you know, like I had a beef with his side of the family um, just because they were from the islands and they looked at me like I was just some nasty, dirty, like, I don't even know. Like, they, they, would, they would treat me like the ugly stepsister and I couldn't understand why. And then I asked a Jamaican woman, um, what is up with this? Like, have you, like experience this or do you know anything and she straight up told me it's because there's this thing this way of thinking in the islands where um and even even over in africa we'll get into that in a second but these other countries they look at us uh, american black people as trash as like as like pick me's or as um just straight up like sellouts like we chose to be here like we chose to deal with slavery like we chose that right um they very much so um act like that that's what she was saying to me right that's what she was saying to me and i'm just like okay i'll take that in and i'll digest it um but as far as like african culture i have struggled with that since the beginning of time um, that I can remember. I have some uh, Ghanaian um, and Ethiopian um, and, and other uh, other countries. I have co cousins from other countries as well. But one thing's for sure and one thing's a fact, okay? Um, anytime we had a family reunion or a wedding, which wasn't many. There was no there wasn't many of these events that I that I was invited to, but whenever I would go, there was a big division. None of my African cousins or family members wanted to come near me, talk to me. Every time I tried to talk to them, it was a like ill get away from me and I never understood it. Um and then up like even recently, um I've gone to an African restaurant to showcase in my magazine and just be like, like, this is a great place to eat if you want to tap into your culture. Um, they have really amazing food here that is made from people from that country. Um, so, you know, from that continent. So why not go there and enjoy the food? Because it's authentic, right? It's authentic. And I went there and the vibes were great. The vibes are great. There were people of different races in there, white, black, um, Hispanic, like there were so many different types of races, right? Um, and cultures. So I felt like the vibes were great. And um, we got our food and whatnot. But um, I just noticed that the vibes were off. The vibes were off with the people in, who looked like me, but were different culture, because even the owner, like he came in, he came and talked to us at the end and was like, hey, how are you enjoying the food? And, you know, he kind of scolded my man like, you know, you, you, he didn't even eat nothing. You have a long way to go on him. And I'm like, you know, ha, 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 he, he, I do. And he's like, are you African? And I'm like, oh, African of descent. And I'm like, no. I am not. I am. I'm African American. I'm from here, um, but I have family who are from Ghana, and like I was trying to relate relate to him, and he's just like, "Oh, okay." You could tell like his whole demeanor changed. <laughs> like, "Oh, you're just American." Okay, well, I'll back off. And he's like, "Well, that girl over there is, you know, Ghanaian uh, from Ghana, and then that dude over there is from Ghana, so you know." And I'm like, "Oh, hi!" And they just gave me a look like, "Girl." Hmm. So I don't know. That's been something that I've always had to deal with 
um, <laughs> where I just don't, I don't understand it. Um, another form of division that I've noticed as well is um, what you like. If you're a nerd or if you like anime, um, then your black hood non like an anime friends and family they're going to clown you like that's just something I've always had to deal with I've had to mask and hide who I truly was from my family for so long because I rocked stuff like Evanescence um okay like Britney Spears <laughs> in sync um I rocked all types of different artists. They, it wasn't just Destiny's Child. It wasn't just Genuine or shit. Like, no, I had a wide variety of music um, and my family could not understand why. And so I would have to hide and listen to music like when I wasn't home or I would mask um, who I am. I never dressed emo like I really wanted to, but I was told I have to dress like this or whatever, whatever. And I never really was myself. So the person that you all grew up with, the Sadea you guys grew up with, that wasn't even me. For real. That really wasn't even me. <laughs> that was a watered down version of me that was being controlled. It was not me. Um, and so, but I loved anime. I loved all types of things that didn't per se fit a black um, person's personality or you know facade or, or face or whatever I don't know what it's called but I don't know people were just like really did not like me being different and so I had to be just like everybody else I didn't get to enjoy being different like there were times that I really did be different and 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 did what I wanted to do to stand out but it didn't really 100% work for me <laughs> And I guess one more I'll talk about um, is the fact that I've always gotten shade for dating outside of my race, like always um, by my folks. And there was one dude in particular that stood out to me that I used to work with and go to school with. <laughs> I won't mention his name, but I remember one day, um, mind you, I will go to this boys party all, he would have parties all the time and have like a whole bunch of white girls and white dudes at his house and every all people of all types of races at his house right and because his his peeps have money like that like they have money like that and so um I would just like I would go I'll have a good time he wouldn't be paying me um no mind when like the white girls were around but then he would dip and try to find time to try to disappear with me and talk to me um to just only try to sleep with me and it was like no it's not happening no 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 and he didn't like that so I think he did this on purpose because one day we were at work and he was all like um he saw that I was dating a white man and he was just like, ew, like you date white men, da, 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 that's so trashy, that's so trifling, that's so this and this and this and that. And I'm just like, pause, <laughs> crisscross applesauce, pause, sir, because the parties you be having, okay, you cannot talk because I see I see you. I see you all up on the girls, on the white girls. And then, you know, um, when they give you whatever you want, you turn to me to try to get. Uh, the, and it's just like, no, like I see what's happening here, sir. Um, you're a womanizer. You're only talking in, uh, uh, you know, like I don't appreciate that. And he really had the nerve to say to me that yes he is doing that because he's doing what the white man did to us for so to them and to us for so long that was his response and i said sir i said sir no <laughs> we don't get to have double standards here okay um no, that's called being a womanizer. You don't get brownie points for sure. Don't get brownie points over here um, for that. And also, how you how are you dipping in creamer and mad at me for dipping in creamer, sir? Excuse me. So the bottom line is that there's just like there's so many different types of 
things and umbrellas of hate that I have not even probably touched, um, touched on with you guys within the black community. Okay, there are so many different ways, but let's talk about some solutions and what we can do to like make things better, right? Because like I said, that's what this podcast is about. So I'd have to say definitely being supportive um, on both ends. So to my light-skinned women, we adore y'all. There is no hate. There is no hate, at least for me. There is no hate. Um, Y'all are beautiful. Y'all are beautiful in your own way. You are black. Don't let anybody tell you you're not. Um, Embrace whichever and both of whatever you are, or even if you're not. Um, and that's the other thing, people, y'all have to understand that are, there are different levels of mixed. There are different level of levels of mixed. My kids are mixed. Um, like, like, because their dad is white. But there are mixed people who both parents are black but their grandparent is white there are different types of mixed okay so let's also erase that th- way of thinking and assuming oh somebody is light-skinned that means their mom's white or their or their dad's um black or you know vice versa because that's not always the case like my grandmother was very much very light-skinned like she could pass as um a puerto rican woman But she's black, (laughs) y'all. Okay, so there's different types of mix. So let's get that in our heads. Um, But just like light-skinned women, just know we love you. We appreciate you. But we do need you guys as an advocate and to understand that the more um, canes that we have that know the power and um, appreciation or level of, like, past that they have – We need those type of people who know the past that they have to use it for good and not be mean towards or put down um, the darker tone women because we be we support the heck out of y'all and y'all support the heck out of us. I have so many light skin friends that don't make me feel ugly. They don't put effort in to make me feel like trash or beneath them. Um, they don't make me feel like they're flaunting their like pretty on me, which I love that. Please flaunt your pretty on me. Like when I say flaunt your pretty on me, I mean like okay. This is weird. So <laughs> sometimes this is what's hard about having a podcast, okay? You have to choose your words properly. When I say flaunting off your pretty, there are different ways to do it. I want you to show me how beautiful you are. I want you to feel confident. I want you to show me and tell me you feel confident. Don't share that confidence. I mean, don't don't keep that confidence to yourself. Share that with me. I would love to see I love to see it. But don't make me feel ugly. That's that's where I perfect example, okay? Perfect example. I just had a falling out with an individual who happened to be light skinned and then it turned into this whole debate because I felt like they were practicing colorism because she um, I'm always going to her page, always showing love, always talking about her her jewelry like, girl, you are bomb like you are doing it. You are killing it. And she never comes on my page and says anything. And then this one day on Juneteenth, she decided to come on my page and ask me, what am I doing, like, with my makeup? And then I explained to her, and then she just still was being bitter and did, like, a bunch of bitter emoji faces. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, what's happening here? And then, so I, I, yes, I assumed and went straight to the fact that she was being a colorist because there is no other excuse, I've never been mean to her. I've only poured love and light on her. And all she did was come, all she's done is come on my page and be a hater. So I immediately went to, oh, this must be another um, light-skinned woman who feels like the need to make me feel ugly compared to her, which is not fair because I don't come on your page making you feel a type of way. So, um, 
that is what I mean. Okay. You can be pretty. You can be confident. I love that. But don't make me feel ugly because of something because you don't like something of me or mine or that I got on or something that you don't understand that I'm wearing. Don't do that. But that is very much a thing. So light skinned women, please be our advocates. Please fight for us because there are so we already have enough people putting us down. So we need you to be there for us to lift us up as as we should be lifting you up. We should not be putting y'all down. We should not be telling you you're not all black. We should not be telling you half the things that I've heard y'all have to go through as well. OK, so that is one thing. Sticking up for each other, not being in a cane, not being hateful towards each other. Less like we, we can do this. We got this. Another thing we can do is stop just saying whatever on our platforms and podcasts because <sighs> although it is freely given like you can anybody can just hop on the on their camera and make a podcast um and upload it onto Spotify and YouTube anybody can go on TikTok and record a 10 minute segment Anybody can hop on these platforms and get on here and say whatever they want. And that's also why it's super important to be careful with who you take advice from. Like even me. OK, even me. Like I am not a healed individual. I'm healing. I'm not healed. But I I feel like I would never come from a spot to tell you guys what to do as far as um, with your life like big life decisions. Any of my topics that I talk about, there are things that um, are going on in the world and that I feel like are not being addressed enough and that need um, a solution. So sitting on a podcast saying that, um, you know, chicks are like this or dudes are like this and that's why, you know, relationships are, are not working. You guys have to understand that you are um spreading information misinformation to a group of people that look at that potentially may look up to you and if you're not being wise with what you're sharing or advice that you're giving you have a whole group of people in your hand um and you're controlling their life because they are listening to what you're saying and not really understanding the context of Pretty much anybody can hop on here, meaning people who are mentally ill, people who are um, have heavy baggage and narcissistic. There's a lot of people on here that can just hop on and get podcasts. So maybe we should reconsider what kind of stuff we say on our platforms so that we can spread love and positivity instead of hate and negativity. OK, something else um, that we can do is stop this whole um, you're a different culture, so we can't relate. You're not really black. You're African-American, not really African. You're you know, you were born here on a ship. Um, <laughs> you were dropped off over there. Like, I've heard so many different things, y'all. Let's stop talking to each other like that. Can we, can we stop talking to each other like that? Because in all reality, I don't really know what happened. I don't know if, I mean, okay, so what I believe what happened was that some of us may have been brought on here over on to different places on a boat, but I don't believe every single person who is of color their ancestors i don't believe that they were brought here i believe that some of them were in places already and then they just brought more people from africa over that is my belief don't fight me if you de want to debate it you can email us but that is literally what i feel because i know native americans and have seen pictures of native americans and and um have Native Americans in my family who have pictures from eons ago that were way like much darker than me. So I don't want to hear that whole people were brought on boats. All of us were brought on brought on boats over to here. I don't believe that. But um, 
the whole telling each other that you were bo- bored on a boat, so shut the F up and all this. <sighs> okay, we are meant to stick together, not be divided. I don't know how much more to say. I don't know how many more ways I can say it as. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it does not matter. Because no matter what, the truth has been thrown away, burned, ruined. Okay, there is so many truths out there that have been hidden from us for so long that it does not even, I feel like it does not even matter how any of us got here anymore. You got war going on. You have, we've had been had wars and, and crazy genocidal things happening in the world. And the most you want to do about that is add to it and say, like add to the hate and say um, that we're not alike. That your life is more than like more valuable. No, no, no. There's too much hate and sorrow going on in the world. And we all need to stick together. We do. Um, I mean, damn, we're sitting here saying we want racism to end. But we're totally like giving each other such a hard time on so many different things. And I feel like it's all a laughing joke to other people who are racist because they do bring this point up that we hate each other. We shoot each other. We kill each other. We hate each other. Like, this is what they say. This is what I've heard racists say. Like, y'all hate each other anyway. Y'all shoot each other and kill each other anyway. And I'm just like, I know. I don't know what to say because we shouldn't be. We shouldn't be. We're just adding on to the stereotype and to the agenda that those horrible bad people had for us since the beginning of time, since the beginning of slavery. I really feel like we need to just end it and get together and love on each other. No more calling your black friends who have a proper vocabulary no more calling them white or oreos no more calling your black friends who don't have proper etiquette language ghetto let's stop calling each other names let's stop calling each other names let's stop adding to the narrative let's stop adding to all of it Let's love the black men, let's love uh, black women, let's love them black men, let's tell them how beautiful and strong and important they are. Black men, let's tell black women how beautiful and needed and feminine and gorgeous they are. Can we just like, can we just do that? I think if we poured love on each other, literally without any wanting anything back, without any hesitation, just walking outside and coming across a fellow black person light skin or dark darker skin and being like hey you look good today (laughs) you know what I mean like something we have had so much hate as uh towards towards us and and, and to each other that I think that if we oversaturate each other with love it will all go the hate will all go away all right, it's time for rant under a minute. Um, I don't have time for reindeer games, okay? I love all of y'all. All of my people, I love y'all, okay? Don't hop on somebody, uh, don't hop on another fellow black person's page on Juneteenth, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, Black History Month, okay? I will list a whole bunch of days and times that you do not hop in another black person's anything, comment, anything and say nothing that's the days that we that's the days we really supposed to pour love on each other y'all like really pour love on each other um so don't don't be doing it don't don't fall into what you can and whoever is talking about okay y'all because toxicity never wins it never wins it always just gets somebody bald-headed okay you know what i'm talking about don't get bald-headed yeah Karma's a bitch.
moral of the story is y'all we got this we will rise we will all come up at the top together all different shades of brown and melanated okay we will not let this um agenda of hate win because for the longest we have we will be the change we will be the change okay also don't forget guys you can email me at variety views with a z if you want to be on my podcast because i do allow guests i just haven't had one yet um and also if you have any topics that you want me to cover um that you just like really want my take on please email me um so you can hear more and also that you can maybe you can be picked to be on the podcast and um maybe even also talk about the topic that we're that you wanted to talk about and just like that it is a wrap guys this is my song lifeline this is my song lifeline it's on it's on instagram tiktok facebook um, pretty much all the uh, social media platforms um, and iTunes. It's called Lifeline. I do want to have beef with me. We going to be forever. You shouldn't have texted her, but yet here we are. So now, baby, you stuck with her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not falling for it this time because I'm not your lifeline. Get on your knees and swear to me, hey. <laughs> you keep calling me. I'm not falling deep. All of me. <laughs> Guys, I love you. I hope you have a wonderful week. I will see you again Sunday or Monday, okay? I love you guys. Don't you meet some other dudes swooped in and got your spot. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.